If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you've probably figured out by now that I am a series girl. I read a lot of series, I like to binge a lot of series, but I've never really like, tracked series before and that's something that I want to do more of in 2023. So I went through all of the books that I read in 2022 and picked out all of the series that I either started, continued, or finished and we're going to talk about them. Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Sam. Welcome. I want to talk about all of the series that I read in 2022. I am a big series person. I read a lot of series and I do have a tendency to binge read series. However, since starting booktube, I find it harder to binge read series because I'm trying to read so many different books, so many different types of books like all at one time. Sometimes I don't always get to binge read a series and I've been starting more series before the entire series is published than ever before. That used to be something that I never did. So we're going to talk about all of the series that I either started, continued, or finished. There are quite a few but actually not as many as I thought if we're being honest. And I didn't finish very many series for me. Like normally I finish a lot of series in a year. I only finished one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight series. Now, since I didn't track this, um, if I wanted to, I could probably sit down and figure out like how many series did I start versus how many series did I finish? How many series did I start and finish in the same year? I don't really care this year. Like I'm going to track some of that a little bit more in 2023. I'm not gonna bother with that for 2022. We're just gonna go straight up. Series I finished, series I started, series I continued. And that is that is that. So we're gonna start on a positive note. We're gonna start with the series that I finished. A lot of these series actually, the last book came out in 2022. So I did read them like fairly quickly. So that's pretty good. So we're gonna start on a high note with the series that I finished in 2022. Okay, first up, I don't actually own the first book. So I'm gonna hold up the second book, but These Hollow Vows. I read both of these books in 2022 back to back absolutely loved them this is described as very similar to akatar and it absolutely is we have a girl who goes to the fey world and she ends up in like this competition to marry the seely prince but she's also working secretly with the unseely prince and trying to rescue her sister from the unseely king and it's like this whole thing so we've got the love triangle we've got the like it's like it, the selection meets akatar it's good i enjoyed it i actually listened to them both as audiobooks would not recommend that. I don't think they were great audiobooks, but I did really like the story and I do really want to reread this in the future, not as an audiobook, because I think I'm gonna like it better that way. Next up, I finished the Bargainer series. The first book is Rhapsodic and we are following Calypso and she was a child and she ends up killing her stepfather and calling on the Bargainer to help her get out of this situation, not get arrested for murder. Um, and she ends up kind of getting herself into some trouble and ends up with like 300 and something deals that she owes the bargainer. Um, it's been seven years since she last saw him. She is now an adult and he comes back to collect on all of those bargains. This is an adult, new adult fantasy romance. It is very good. I did highly enjoy it. I think the whole series is like a four star series for me. It was fun. There's people walking outside my window. And now I feel awkward. Are they coming towards my house? Please go away. Okay, they're turning. <laughs> um, anyways, I would highly recommend this series if you like fantasy romance. It does have very similar like Akatar vibes or that type of fantasy romance and it's got the Fae. Highly recommend that one. Next up, I finished the Prison Healer series. I absolutely love this. I also listened to these as audiobooks and I would recommend these audiobooks. I thought they were very well done. I really enjoyed them. The first book is following Kiva and she is a healer and a prisoner at Zalandov, um, which is a giant prison in this like dystopian fantasy world type of thing. And a new prisoner comes in and it happens to be the Rebel Queen who is unconscious. And the Rebel Queen is sentenced to the trial by ordeal, which is four magical trials based on elemental magic that nobody has ever survived. Um, so Kiva volunteers to take her place. And if she makes it through all the trials, she will be set free. If she doesn't, she dies. And it goes from there. It's super fun. The second book goes in a completely different direction and I absolutely love it. Next up, I finished Kingdom of the Wicked, which y'all already know was one of my favorites. I absolutely adored the series. We are following Amelia, Amelia, I almost said Emma and then I almost said Emily and it was kind of a combination of the two. So we are following Amelia and her twin sister, Vittoria, is murdered. 
Um, and so Amelia decides to call on one of the princes of hell to help her. He is a demon. She is absolutely not supposed to be doing that. Did I mention she's a witch? Um, not supposed to be calling on a prince of hell by any stretch of the imagination, but she does. And Wrath is not anything like she thought. If you want a dark fantasy romance in the new adult genre, this is marketed as young adult. It is absolutely not the first book. We can argue young adult. Okay, I understand that. The second book, less so. The third book, absolutely not. New adult all the way. Next up, I did start and finish the Inheritance Game series. I absolutely loved it. There is actually a new book coming out, but it's really more of a companion novel so I'm still considering this a completed series but I did read all three absolutely loved them we are following a girl who suddenly discovers that she is the sole heir to a billionaire um she's never met him she has no idea who he is and his entire family has just been like left nothing in favor of this girl that nobody knows um and so she gets to his mansion and there's all of these puzzles and riddles and secret rooms and secret passages and something real weird going on and it is so much fun if you like puzzles and mysteries and anything like that you're gonna love this series. Next up I finished Throne of Glass. I read the last three books last year and absolutely loved them. I did not have high hopes because I did not like the first two books. I was bored to tears through the first two books. The third one got a little better, the fourth one got a little worse, and then books five, six, and seven just absolutely made the entire series worth it. It was worth every second to get to those moments. So I would recommend this series. However, I would recommend you push through if you don't like it. If you read Akatar first, it's not going to be the same until books five, six, and seven. Then you start to get similar feelings. But it's fantasy first, romance second, whereas Akatar is romance first, fantasy second. Just kind of flip it. Next up, I finished The Illuminae Files. I really enjoyed this. I listened to these as audiobooks as well. They have a full cast. They are so much fun. This is a sci-fi intergalactic space war type of thing. We're following teenagers who were on this illegal mining project on a planet and they are um, attacked by an enemy ship and they have to flee the planet. Their ship is broken. The enemy is behind them. The AI on one of the ships is going crazy. It's a whole thing. It's also told in like chat speak and documents and like the AI thing is talking for a while back here like it's it is so interesting it is so much fun I would highly recommend the audiobooks and then the last series that I finished kind of I know there's like a second generation of it now and I haven't read that yet but like the original trilogy I finished and that is Mistborn this first book is called The Final Empire this is by Brandon Sanderson this is an epic fantasy that follows a bunch of characters but really two main ones Vin and Kelsier um, and Vin is a young girl and Kelsier is kind of the leader of this band of thieves and they are they're kind of going on a heist but not like a normal heist this heist is to kind of take over the government from the evil overlord and save the world basically so a heist with much bigger stakes all right those are all the series that I finished this year I think I actually did pretty good with those. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. There are a lot more series that I did not finish, but we're gonna move on to the series that I'm caught up with because I couldn't finish these series because the next books aren't even out yet. So these are the series that I am caught up with. I have read as much as possible. The first book is The Stardust Thief. This is actually the only book out. So I did read the first one. I am technically caught up with the series, but we don't have another one yet. This is kind of like an Arabian Nights retelling, got a little bit of like Aladdin themes in there. Um, we have like a magic lamp and a thief who is sent on this mission to find this lamp and it's just like a whole thing. It's super fun. I really enjoyed it. It's a very different setting than I'm used to in fantasy so that was really cool and I am very excited for the second book. Next up I am caught up on the Glacian trilogy. The first book is Ledge. This is also the only book out so far so was not hard to be caught up in this series. Um, this book follows a girl living in this little colony on, you've got like a rock wall on one side and then like a big trench on one side so they're trapped basically and every season the Glacian creatures, these winged creatures, will come and take some of the villagers as a sacrifice and when our main girl is chosen as the sacrifice she's actually rescued by a half Glacian half human and the plot spirals from there. It's not very long um and I'm I'm absolutely dying for the second book like absolutely dying. Typical fantasy romance don't have much to say about it in that respect if you like fantasy romance you're probably gonna like this one. Okay next up might be a little cheating a little bit but I am technically caught up on 
this Hades and Persephone series. The first book is A Touch of Darkness. Um, I have read the first three and the fourth one comes out this year. This is all from Persephone's point of view. It's a pretty typical Hades and Persephone retelling. Um, there is a second part to this series from Hades point of view. I haven't read any of those. And I, from my understanding, the fourth book combines those points of view. So I feel like I probably should read the Hades points of views, but like it's the same story, just his point of view instead of her point of view. So like technically I'm caught up on the story, even if I haven't read his point of view at all yet, but it's really like two different series kind of, not really. You get where I'm going with that. I will say I'm usually not a Hades and Persephone fan. That one's not bad. I kind of like that one. Next up, I am caught up on The Beautiful by Renee Audier. This is a paranormal fantasy romance. I keep saying that it's kind of like if you take Stalking Jack the Ripper and mix it with Twilight. We've got the love triangle, we've got the paranormal, we've got the creatures, but we've also got like the historical mystery going on. The second and third book take it in a very different direction, especially the third book, and then it feels much less paranormal and much more fantasy, and I can't explain why without giving everything away, so I will not. But I am caught up on the series, and I am excited for the fourth book. Next up, I am caught up on Outlander. I wish I wasn't because I did not want to be caught up. I just wanted to keep reading it forever and ever and ever. I will probably be waiting 10 million years for the last book. I hope that it's the last book. I, I mean, I do and I don't, but also like, I'm gonna be waiting forever, so. It's cool, I'm not bitter about it at all, but I am caught up. I will probably be rereading at least the first book this year because I miss it like a lot. Next up, I caught up on Blood and Ash. I have read all of the Blood and Ash books. I am currently in the middle of the second Flesh and Fire book, which is kind of like part of the series, but not really like the prequel series to this series. But this series itself, I am caught up on. I did finish The War of Two Queens, absolutely loved it. If you haven't heard of this book, this is by Jennifer L. Armentrout, and it is following Poppy, who is a maiden in a world where basically she is not allowed to look at, talk to, be touched by anybody. Um, she has to wear this white veil. I'm really sorry if you can hear my cat just screaming. I promise she's fine. She's just in a mood. She has food, she has water. She's just annoying. Anyways, her guard is killed and so she ends up with a new guard and a lot of things happen from there. Actually, the first book is like so different from the rest of the series. You hit the War of Two Queens and you're like, that first book seems like it was 10 million years ago. So Obviously I would highly recommend the series. It is one of my favorite series of all time. I have been annotating the entire series. It is the only series that I have ever annotated. And I'm really enjoying it and I can't wait for the next one. And last up, I caught up on Crescent City. I did read the second book, loved it. Liked the first book a lot better, but the second book was solid. That ending, we all know that that ending was literally just like crazy. I also recently saw somebody describe this as Zootopia but in a fantasy setting and that's the best description I have ever heard and it is so true. Alright next up we're going to talk about the series that I either started or continued in 2022 but have not finished and there are other books so I could continue but I'm not caught up and I have no excuse for any of these. First up we have Married to Magic. I have read the first two, the third one came out last year, have not gotten around to it yet. Um, this is a companion series, so each book follows a different couple in the same world. So in this first book we have a girl who is taken into this other realm to marry the elf king and yeah, it's pretty straightforward from there. It's kind of Beauty and the Beast-esque, kind of-ish, enemies to lovers. It's fun. I enjoyed it. The second one is um, Dance with the Fae Prince. Another, well, I guess that's why it's called Married to Magic. They're all kind of forced marriages, <laughs> um, but I'm enjoying them. They're fun. Next up, I started The Simple Wild. I have not read the next book. I really, really want to. I hope to get to it this month, um, but I just haven't gotten there yet. So this one follows Kala and she her mom and dad got divorced when she was like two. They left. Her dad lives in Alaska. He will never leave Alaska. Um, she does not talk to her father, but she finds out that he has cancer. So she goes to Alaska as her last chance to really get to know her father. Um, and there she meets Jonah, who is a pilot for her father's charter plane company. Typical Alaskan 
bush type of person he will also never leave alaska obviously they fall in love um but he will never leave alaska and she doesn't want to stay in alaska so you know conflict it's fun though i really liked it i didn't think i was gonna like it all that much i was very nervous about it but i absolutely loved it jonah is one of my favorite love interests of all time all right next up is a series that i'm not actually sure if i'm going to read the whole series but i did read bully by penelope douglas i've talked about this book a lot um it is a bully romance I struggled with the bully aspect of the bully romance, but the romance part almost made up for it. And it might have, I don't, I don't know. So there is a book 1.5, which is the same story, but from his point of view. And then it also is one of those like companion romance novels where the book two follows a different character in the same story. Um, I don't know that I care about that, but I do want to read his point of view because I just feel like that's going to change a lot of things for me. So we'll see. Next up, I started the deal. I read the first three books. I do need to read books four and five. And I just got them for Christmas. So I am planning to finish the series this year. This is a college sports hockey romance series. Each book follows a different couple in the same friend group. It's super fun. I loved all of the three books that I've read. I have very high hopes for the fourth and fifth books. Well, we'll see. Next up, y'all already know I started Crave twice. Um, DNF Crush twice. Do not have high hopes that I'm ever going to finish this series, but an attempt has been made multiple times. We'll see. Next up, I started Ice Planet Barbarians. Um, I read the first four. I do have intentions of reading more books, but it's not really a series that I'm like trying to finish per se. It's really just one of those series that I'm going to kind of like read a couple books here and there. You don't really need to read the whole series as a whole. It's not that kind of series. So next up, I started the Witcher series. So I read The Last Witch, which is like I guess book 0 0.5. It's a bunch of short stories. I guess it's introducing you to the world. It wasn't my favorite, but I still have high hopes. I didn't not like it. I just didn't love it. So I do intend to read more of the series and see how that goes. I don't know if it's a series I'll ever finish, but I do intend to read more. Don't ask me what it's about. I really, I know we have a witcher. His name is Geralt, Geralt, something to that effect. Um, he kills monsters. That's, that's, that's all I know. Next up, I started Legendborn. I actually am now caught up with this series, but I just read the second book in 2023, so it doesn't count for series I finished last year. But I did really, really enjoy this book. I was dying for the second book, and I'm really glad that I read it. This is a Dark Academia, King Arthur-inspired young adult fantasy. It's super fun. We have a lot of different types of magic. We have like multiple magic systems kind of competing. We have um, an early college setting. So we've got that dark academia. It's just, I really enjoyed it. It's super fun. The second book absolutely killed me though. I don't know how I'm going to survive waiting until the third book. Okay. And then the next one that I started, but haven't finished is the Flesh and Fire series. This is the prequel series to Blood and Ash. Um, it follows a very very similar story but set like thousands of years before Blood and Ash. I actually like the love interest in this series better. I am currently reading A Light in the Flame but it's 2023 now so I didn't catch up to it in 2022 but I did read the first book. I'm also tabbing this because I'm obsessed with these characters. So that is a mostly kind of ish accurate picture of the series that I read in 2022. I'm sure there's a couple that I'm missing there because I didn't own every single one. Some of them I don't really, some of them I DNF'd like officially so I didn't bother to include those but here they are. I read a lot of series and I am hoping to read a lot more. I'm hoping to catch up on some more this year and start some more and hopefully finish a few because I know that there are some books coming out in 2023 that I am excited for. If you've made it this far in the video and you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon will notify you when I post. I post on Sundays and Wednesdays around 9am. Let me know what your favorite series that you have started, continued, or finished down in the comments and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!